Let's get on our feet and worship him today. Jesus is worthy. Amen.
of these days, we're going to be in heaven together. If you know Jesus the way I know him. And the Bible tells us that as we're surrounding the throne of God with the millions and millions of angels, we're going to hear them singing blessing and honor and glory and power forever and ever, 24 hours a day. If you can't stand here and worship him with all your might, you're going to be so disappointed in heaven because that's what it's about. It's about worshiping him. It's not about what's going on in our life. It's not about the, what our bank account looks like. It's not about how bad our job is or how messed up our marriage is today. Because God came down in his son Jesus Christ and he made a way for you to know him. And he made a way for you to have your stuff work out. And if, and if you're struggling today, man, this is the day for you to lay it down at the throne of God and acknowledge that he is in charge and you are not, you're never going to fix it. He is the only one who can fix you. He is the only one that can fix your life. So, man, we got to give it up. Praise for him today because he's worthy, y'all. He's worthy. glory this morning. Somebody lift up a shout today. We serve a mighty Savior. His name is Jesus and he's in the room today. Jesus is in the building today. Let's just close your eyes for one minute and recognize his presence and just say thank you for just a moment. I praise him because we don't get what we deserve. And somebody else praise him because we don't even get what we ask for sometimes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That thing you asked for, and you're so glad God didn't give it to you. Thank you, Jesus, that you know best. Oh, we 
we praise your name. Thank you for grace. Thank you for the blood that washes our sins away today. May we be reflections of your love and your glory to the world around us, God. When they look at the church, they should, she, they should see Jesus and Jesus only reflected back. Let us be your hands and feet, God. Let us be your words of love. Let us be your forgiveness extended out to the world. We praise your name today. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. All God's people, amen. Amen, church. Can we give God some praise this morning? Because he's so good. Amen. Amen. How many of you guys know, as we said last week, that worship isn't just something that you say. Worship is something you do. And that comes in a form of how we give back to God with he has generously already given to us. And so if this is your first time here at Fellowship of the Nations or maybe you've been a, a, a lifelong member, um, we just want to, again, greet you. But we want to let you know that here we are irrationally generous givers to the God who has irrationally generously given so much to us. And so um, we just want to encourage you to be faithful and obedient with the, uh, the financials uh, income that God has blessed you with. And so if, if that's new to you, um, scripture says that 10% of everything we have belongs back to the Lord. Amen. So if you made $5,000 this whole entire month, uh, then $500 would go back to God. If you made $100 just this week, then 10% of $100 um, would be $10 back to God. And so um, we know that as we give to God, God is faithful. Amen. He is faithful and he gives back exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask pray or think or imagine for amen so there's three simple ways you can give you can give online at fotn.org if you look in front of you you can also give in the envelopes provided in the back or the front of your pew and then third you can give easily through our uh, on our mobile giving we have a phone number that you can text it's an easy easy transaction to go through um, but those are the three ways that you can easily give this morning and so if you have your tithe with you or maybe you've already given earlier this week or earlier this month and um, we want to stand in faith to this morning and can we hold that up and we're just going to play a uh, pray a blessing over that amen god we thank you so much lord that you are good and that your plans and your ways are pleasing and perfect, Father. And so, God, we thank you, Lord, for these who are stepping on in faith to give to you, Lord. Maybe those who are giving for the first time this morning, Father, I pray for blessings over them, God. And for those who have just been continuously giving, and, and we know, God, that they're testifying to your favor, Lord, and your faithfulness, Lord. So I thank you, Lord, for the seeds that are being sown this morning and uh, throughout the months and weeks to come, Lord. I pray, God, that everything they touch would prosper in favor, Lord. Uh, with their finances, even in relationships embodied in their family, God, jobs, opportunities, anything and everything, Lord, that comes straight from your hand, Lord. And I pray, Father, that we would open the door to obedience to receive everything it is that you already have lined up for us, God. We thank you, Lord, that the seeds that we plant aren't temporary, they're eternal, Lord. So I pray, God, that they would be watered and planted in fertile soil, Lord, so that we see not just our community, but this nation and this world changed as a whole, Lord. And we bless you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said? And everybody said? Amen. Amen. We want to let you know if you do have a fussy baby this morning, uh, we do have a cry room if you have to step out for a few minutes to use at your convenience. Thank you, and God bless.
Hello. All right, you'll never see me back here at worship. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kayla Brady. I'm the director of Kid Nation and also the wife of Pastor Locke. I got to brag. Uh, the kids were distracted because they've actually never seen that video. Dylan Brady made it for us. So thank you so much. I'll have to show it in Kid Nation. And I am so honored to have some of our kids here that went to VBS. Our highest VBS number was uh, 67. And we were really, really excited. And we were able to reach out to our community. And that's what this is all about, just reaching out to the kids in our community and pouring God into their lives. So we have two songs here led by Lindsay and Miss Heather. And one is called The Pledge, and another one's called Superheroes. And this year, we were superheroes for God. by God to stand strong, created by God to live for what is right and what is true. We are called by God to help those in need.
for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today at Fellowship of the Nations. Here's what we have coming up. The Mighty, our first annual men's retreat, is on the calendar and space is filling up. September the 15th through the 16th at Lake Tomahawk, this powerful event is just $100 and it includes all meals and lodging. Worship, great teaching, a fishing tournament, and a zip line are all on the agenda. So do not miss this weekend, guys. Sign up and get your deposit in today. The FOTN Friends and Family Barbecue is coming up September the 17th. It's immediately following the service. McKeska's Barbecue and live music from the Chad Ware Band, all for just $10 a person. And when you purchase a ticket, you also receive a chance to win one of two new Panama Jack bicycles. We are so excited to announce that Growing in Graces, FOTN's preschool daycare, is now taking registration for the fall session. Please see Baby Nation Director Samantha Thompson for more information. We're looking forward to having worship artist Fernando Alvarez join us on September the 24th to lead in worship, so you don't want to miss that day. And if you're not connected to a care group yet, there are new groups for you to choose from, so get plugged in to a life-giving relationship today. Now, as always, we want to remind you to please be faithful in your tithes and offerings. It's really easy to give online at FOTN.org, or you can use our new mobile text giving by texting to the number 713-322-4609. And everybody, go out and have a great week. Everybody good? Woo, everybody like that music? I tell you what, man, they are doing a great job. We can give them another hand. I, I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Well, as you uh, see, I gotta gotta brag just a little bit. We um, uh, because we had Lisa Penna. She was our children's director, kid nation director for a long time. But she had a situation with her son, and so she had to be there with him a lot of times. So we just kind of had a transition. Well. My daughter-in-law stepped in, and she said, hey, I'll just be here until you find somebody. Well, she got to doing such a great job. I said, we're not looking for anybody else. <laughs> and uh, so her team of ministers, and when we say every member is a minister, she has a team of ministers in there. They're doing a phenomenal job. If you haven't yet uh, had an opportunity or you want to work in that area, you're more than welcome to join them. They're having a whole lot of fun. So anyway, way to go, Locke. Good job, baby. <laughs> anyway, so uh, hey, this past week, 10th anniversary, 10 years, they celebrated. Way to go. That's so good. Well, we have been, we have been praying and uh, just ask the Lord, because one of the things that we get asked a lot is, when are you going to have a daycare? Well, we've just actually, we've been praying and we said, Lord, you know, if it's, if it's you, you'll bring the right one at the right time and whatever. And we had actually talked to uh, a couple of different people, but then God had his way, and he brought the right people along. And so I want to introduce you. Y'all know Samantha. She is uh, our, our Baby Nation director. But not only is she going to be Baby Nation director, but she's going to be the director of our daycare. Let me introduce to you Kendra and Jeff Cox. They're right here. Let's give them a big hand. They... Uh, are not only members of our church now, but they are the owners of Growing in Graces. And, uh, and so, Kendra, I want you just to tell us what's going to be coming, what can we can expect here in the next few weeks or months or whatever. Well, we're super excited to be here and to partner with Fellowship of the Nation. That, that's just a given. We, we love it here, and Brother Johnny's just been absolutely wonderful. Um, what you kind of expect in probably the next couple of months is we'll be opening up um, a preschool program and an after-school program. So we just, we just want to love and hug on your babies and, and give them a Christian-based curriculum and um, just, just provide them the best care that we can. We have several locations actually in the North Shore area. Um, Crosby, Atascocita, and Summerwood area. So we, we want to share that ministry here um, with the uh, children's ministry part at Fellowship of the Nation. So I know Samantha's going to do a wonderful job as the director, and she can actually help you um, give any more information about the curriculum or even job opportunities. We can't give an exact date when we're going to open, but we will definitely keep you informed. But thank you for having us. Amen. Amen. Well, let me... Uh, let... Let me just say this. I mean, her husband Jeff, he he is he's working and he's getting all of the 
everything up to code. And so, you know, all you got to go through, jump through all the hoops to get that. So that is being done as we speak. And so we're excited about that. He's working hard at getting all that done. So just be praying. And what I'd like for us to do, just to take a moment and pray over this ministry, that not only every kid that would come here, that we would see them just really be ministered to. That it's not just some regular daycare, but this is a special place that these kids can feel the love of Jesus. So we want to pray that. So Father, we thank you for Jeff and, and Kendra and for Samantha. And Father, we thank you. We ask that everything that Jeff is going through now, that you just make a way. Lord, it wouldn't be any stress that you just make a way through all of the different things that need to be done. And Father, we pray for every child that's going to be a part of this ministry, that you would minister to them. They would feel your love. They would be ministered. You would place every person who's going to be working, who's going to be holding babies and ministering to those children, that they would be your people, designed by you, filled with your spirit to move in power. Lord, these, these children need a touch from you. So we ask that. We thank you for it. We ask your blessing upon this couple, upon Samantha. And we thank you for what you're going to do. And we give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you, guys. Well, wait, 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 before we do anything else, I got a surprise. I just had to have a little surprise, if you don't mind. Uh, <clears throat> when we started, we have some overseers. Well, one of the overseers that we picked for, uh, for our church, obviously, was a man of wisdom and a man who had been doing this a whole lot longer than I have, and it's none other than my dad, John Brady Sr., and uh, love him dearly. But uh, they didn't know we were going to do this because m my mom hates surprises, so I'm, I'm going to stand up here, and she's going to be back there. So she's not here. But tomorrow, they're going to be celebrating their 64th anniversary, and I wanted to honor them. And so would y'all please stand? <clears throat> and uh, Marisa, I just go ahead and... <laughs> we love you guys so much. We thank you for your example. Thank you for your prayers and leadership. Thank you for being our Bible teachers here. And uh, we want to say we love you. And don't, don't take away the banana pudding and chocolate pie. That's all I'm saying, Mom. All right. <laughs> Come on, still show me some love. Anyway, happy anniversary, guys. All right. <laughs> Amen. You, my friend, have done it. She said yes. So now here you are, surrounded by your family and friends in an expensive tux your mother-in-law to be picked out, promising a whole bunch of things, hard things, like to love no matter what, to honor and cherish her till death do you part. But good for you. I mean, you are the man. But pretty soon, maybe even next week, you're going to do something that makes her think you care more about ESPN than her feelings. You'll leave the seat up and put the toilet paper on the right way. You know, paper over, even though she likes it under. We're with you on this one, by the way. Or you'll tell her the truth about the meatloaf, or the way she looks in her new jeans, and her dull family reunions. You'll probably even invite the guys over for poker on that one night she asked you to go to one of those places where you paint dishes together. You'll throw your stinky socks on the floor and forget the anniversary of the first time you said I love you. But let's not think about that now. This is a really big day. Your day, the beginning of a future built on love. But not the greeting card kind of love, all flowery and words about happy times, because the truth is, sometimes love is messy and scratchy and uncomfortable, even painful. True love overlooks, it sacrifices, sticks it out, gives and forgives. The love she's looking for, or you're looking for, <laughs> we're all looking for, is a lot like God's love. Perfect, unending, and unconditional. He promised us a bunch of things, but most importantly, to love us, no matter what. Dirty laundry, bad habits, and everything else. Amen. Anybody got the word? 
Word up, hold it in the air like you really, really care. Say it together. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide His Word in my heart so that I might not sin against God. Holy Spirit, give me ears to hear and strength to obey in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to turn to... Genesis is the first chapter, and we are actually finishing this series, and what I wanted to do was I wanted to complete some of what we started um, last week, because in the sixth day, what we see is that God, crea- God created man, and created animals, and so he created the animals first, and then he made man. So what I want us to do is put uh, the scripture up there as we go into Genesis 1, beginning with verse 26, and let's read this, and God said, let us make man in our image. Now, I want to just remind you, it's interesting because we see that everything else was just kind of an, uh, was speaking with authority. Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be firmament. Let there be the division of the, the water and the, and the land, and let there be vegetation. But when it came to this, it went from authority to affection. We see this. It says, hey, here's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they're coming together. Let us create something. Let us mold something here that's not only, it's not going to be an animal, you know, as some say, just kind of the highest animal on the food chain. No, this is going to be a human being. Being. This is going to be someone that, that we're going to have communion with. This is going to be someone we're going to love, someone that we will spend eternity with. And so this is going to be our creation. And how are we going to do it? Well, let's create him in our image according to our likeness, and then let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth. Then and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth including mice and everything else. And God created man in his own image. Important to understand, in the image of God, he he repeats this, he created him, and then he made him male and female, he created them. Interesting to note right there, God is not a body, God is a spirit. So he made man as a spirit man. And so when we look at these scriptures, we want to remind you that it's not a situation where we're an earthly being having a temporary spiritual experience, we are a spirit being having a temporary earth experience. All right? I want you to get that because many times we live our life as if this is all there is. We're just going to be here. No, we're just passing through. You may be a, live to be 100, but that's a second compared to what your spirit life is going to be. So God made man in his image, a spirit man, and then he made them male and female. <clears throat> so, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed, we talked about that, that is on the surface of all the earth, every tree which has fruit yielding seed, and it should be food for you and to every beast of the earth and to every bird in the sky, to everything that moves on the earth which has life. And I have given every green plant for you for food, and it was so. And God saw that all he had made, and behold, it was very good. And when God looks at you, he says, I did a good job. Now, what the world would say with commercials and everything else is for you to be dissatisfied with how you look. But what God says is, I made you. I formed you in your mother's womb, and man, I did a good job. You look amazing, and you do, all right? So just grab a hold of it. He said, and it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, and that was the sixth day. Then we jump over to, to uh, Genesis chapter 2, and so I'm going to give you just a few verses here. <clears throat> then the Lord God, he formed man of dust from the ground. This is where we see God kind of getting his hands dirty for the first time, all right? He created this dirt pile so to speak, and from the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Why? Because God is life. He's the life giver. The moment that we were conceived, he allowed that conception to happen. You are not an accident. You're here on purpose. You have purpose. You have meaning. You're here in 2017 for a reason. All right, so you grab a hold of those truths because when depression wants to come in, frustration, anxiety, all the negative emotions say, well, why am I here? You're here. And the reason why you're here is God, listen, not to exist, not to just hang out and do nothing. Find your purpose. Amen? 
Find your purpose. Man, you may be going through some difficult times. But let me say this, not even in my notes, but I feel like I need to say it. In your darkest moments, God can use you probably the best than in any other time. Yeah, man, you don't know what I'm going through. No, but God does. You don't know the pain of what I've experienced. No, but God does. And God will take what the devil meant for destruction. He'll use it for good, and he will bless not only you, but he'll bless others in the process. Amen? <laughs> Grab a hold of that truth. So, so God breathed a life, and man became a living being. Then, so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And there's a reason why God caused him to sleep. Because have you ever tried to get a rib away from a man? I'm just saying. Uh, <clears throat> so, if you had some barbecue ribs, you know, I'm waiting for Richard Segura to cook me some barbecue ribs. Anyway, uh, so, the, so the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh at that place. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and uh, flesh of my flesh. She, be, she shall be called woman. And as some say, he looked at her and went, whoa, man. That was a <clears throat> Anyway, because she was taken out of man for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So, when we look at, at the beginning of how we started, it's interesting to note that he may, he may have created a bunch of different pairs of animals, but on this one, he only did one couple, male and female. And the reason why is because he wants us to go back to the fact that we all started with the fingerprint of God. We all started with purpose. We all started with meaning in our life. And so that's why we want to be careful. I got you. We want to be careful with, uh, you know, how we treat other people. Why? Because really, there's... There is a father that we have in common. You know, we can make, make jokes, you know, turn around and say we're, we're brothers from another mother, you know, because we've grown up together. But it's the truth that we really have the same father. So I want us to take a moment, and I want us just, just to talk a little bit about the fact that God made man. Now, it was Jesus that made him. So I want us just to take just a, a, a moment and kind of look at just on that particular day, what it may have been like if Jesus was there. And so here he is. He's, he's got this pile of dirt, but he said, okay, well, I guess I need a skeletal structure, you know. So he begins to put all these bones together. And in our body, we have 206 different bones. And so he began to put the skull and all the framework there and the ribs and the Knee bone connected to the thigh bone, and then, you know, if you sing that song, I don't know if he wrote that song, but it was, it was probably a good one. And uh, anyway, so you have this skeletal structure that's there. Well, then he needs a nervous system. Now, how's he going to do it? He's omniscient. He knows everything. And so he says, well, we got to have a brain. So you got a brain about the size of cauliflower head, you know, it's just right there. But in that, that is the nervous system. You got the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe and the cerebellum, and you got the brain stem, and you got the spinal cord. And it's amazing what is going on in our brain. Because right now, as you're sitting here, it's like there's a little person in there, and he's going, okay, we got the heart rate. There's a resting rate because they're sitting there. Okay, heart rate about 56 beats per minute. You know, okay, we're good. We got that. And then we got the body heat. Uh, they're good. It's kind of maybe a little cool for some, but for some women, it's a little hot in here. And, uh, you know, we'll just, uh, we got the heart rate, and we got the body heat, 98.6. You know, and it's just kind of rolling. You don't even think about it. He's talking about movement, you know. You may have a pen. You may be writing some notes or, or looking at your phone or something. You, you just take it for granted that all those things are happening. It's all in your brain. It's all there. It's a nervous system. And what happens is we have this, this nervous system that goes all the way through our body. You know, we have these, these feelings, you know. Not only that, it's, it helps in our speech. I can't speak without my brain giving me thought to exercise that and to bring thought out into vocal where my voice actually speaks it. It all just happens. You think that's just, it's just happened. No. God made a brain to do all of that. You know, uh, motor skills, how do we take a step? I don't think about stepping, but we just take a step. It's all in their brain. God did all of that. It's not just random. You know, it's not natural selection. It's not mutation, adaptation. It's not any of that. It's God created an amazing nervous system. And this nervous system goes all through our bodies. And we have the ability to, with our senses, we can touch 
touch, taste, see, smell, hear, you know. And so he did all of those things so that we would have a body. So when he's making this, it's like, okay, uh, we'll call him Adam, you know, and uh, I'm going to make man, and here he is. and he, Okay, and I'm going put to put an eyes in there because he needs to see. God sees everything. And so if we're going to be in the image of God, he says, okay, he's got to have some eyes. It's interesting with just the eyeball, one of the most complex organs that we have. An eyeball on the outer, we have the cornea. It's that clear thing on your eye. Not only the cornea, right, right behind that is the iris. It is like your eyeball is it's a digital camera on steroids is what it is. It's an amazing organ that we have. So we got this where you have the cornea and you got the iris. The iris, is, uh, it manipulates the, uh, the pupil. It's like a, a, a camera shutter. You know, it's, it's there, and it, it focuses in on how much light's going to come in. And then behind that, you got a lens, you know. And then behind that, you got this vitreous gel that's inside there. And then in the back of your eye is the retina, which is the thin layer that takes in all these images. And it's connected to an optic nerve that comes now to you, connects it to your brain. So you're able to see what's that in just a moment, in a flash. You're able to see, look around, see things coming at you adjust, duck, hopefully, all right? And so, Termite needed some of those when he was boxing. Too bad he didn't duck enough. Anyway, <laughs> so, anyway, so, you know, all of this is happening in, in our body, but God did it because he wants you to understand you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And a lot of times we don't think about it. You know, we just think about the negative. Oh, man, I eat too much, need to lose a few, you know, <clears throat> And we, and we think of, of the negative, but when we look in our bodies, we say, man, I really am feel fearfully and wonderfully made. If I'm designed by God, then maybe I need to be used by God. Amen? Amen. So now we have this body. Not only do we have this, this brain and this nervous system, we have a circulatory system that we're looking at. Circulatory system has got a heart that automatically beats. You don't even think about it. You're sitting there right now, and your heart's beating. You're not, you didn't get up this morning going, okay, heart, ready, start, I'm going, time to wake up. To do, to do, to do. You didn't do that. God just made you where you just automatically, boom, 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 boom. You got lungs, you're just breathing. And so from your heart comes arteries. Those arteries go into capillaries. Those capillaries go into to all your, your extended areas. Why? Because there's life in the blood. When you don't have blood going into your bodies, what do you do? That area will die. That's why in some, you know, you have some illnesses, diseases where, you know, they have to take off a little bit of that. And so it's life in the blood. Then you have veins that bring the blood all the way back to the heart again. Interesting that God makes all of that happen. And why does he do that? Because he was there that day and he looked and said, okay, you need some eyes, you need a brain, you need a nervous system, you need a skeletal. Okay, I'm going to put a heart in there because the heart really not only is it a muscle to pump blood, which is going to be life to you, but we're going to call it a heart also, the seat of the emotions, that hopefully you will love me with all of your heart. That's just going to be the center. That's going to be what's going to be pumping life through you, not just blood that we say physical, but the blood of Jesus that would come through and we understand what being purified and cleansed and redeemed is all about. And so we have this, this uh, circulatory system, and then we've got this, these lungs, this oxygen, this system that we have there. It's amazing that while he's doing that, he says they need to breathe, so he's going to give us two nostrils. Thank God for that. <laughs> it's, amazing. it's amazing we have two ears and two nostrils and one mouth. Think about that one. So now he says, I want you to breathe, so I'm going to give you an airway, a couple of them, all right? In your nose, two nostrils, then I'm going to give you a mouth. And here is your, your, your trachea, your windpipe, and it's going to go into your lungs. Your lungs are in two cavities. Those are bronchi. And they're going to go into smaller tubes, which are bronchial tubes, all right? And they're going to go down to these little bitty microscopic air sacs. And those air sacs are called alveoli. And those alveoli are what, what takes the oxygen and it sends it into the blood system all through our body. Now, it's amazing. While you're sitting here, it takes that, the avioli takes, takes even the carbon dioxide, the trash, the waste in you, and when you exhale, you go, you're breathing in life, and it has a way to breathe out the negative stuff in your lungs. Isn't that amazing? God is sitting there. Jesus is sitting there, and he says, okay, well, you, I got the brain, I got the nervous system, I got the heart, I got the, cap the arteries, the capillaries, and the veins are bringing the, that stuff back. Now I'm bringing lungs in. That's, that's going in there, and this is, this is cool, so they don't have to worry about it. I got the brain. Brain, make sure 
They're breathing. Make sure the heart's beating. It's going. It's there. Right? Do you think about breathing? Now you're going to think about it. You're going to be yawning here in just a minute. I don't have any air in my body. All right? Then you're going to think, well, not only is it, do, does he need to breathe, well, he needs to eat also. Well, from the same hole that he's breathing in, well, I've got to put something else in there. Well, what is that? Well, let me see that. I've got to put an esophagus in there so that when he swallows, I'm going to put a tongue. I'm putting a tongue in there. Why? Because I'm going to put taste buds. That way, when he eats some chocolate pie, bam, it's going to be good. All right? You're going to taste and see pie is good. All right? Anybody love chocolate out there? Come on, y'all with me. All right? God did that. That's a favor. You know, he goes, man, I know one day he's going to like chocolate. Let me put all them taste buds in there. Whoa. You know, and then he's, in case you eat something dry, he's got some saliva glands. It's going to mix it all up, and then you're going to be able to swallow. All right? It's going to go down the, the your, your uh, esophagus, is going into your stomach, your stomach into your small intestines. We'll do a denim, and then your small intestines. Do you know your small intestines for an adult is 23 feet long? Do you know that? I mean, how would you? Okay, let me, let me make this. Now let me stretch it out some more. No, you're going to need a little more. I mean, Jesus, I mean, did he go 23 feet and then wrap it all in there? And, you know, you go from the small intestine to the large intestine, which is only about five feet long, you know, which is really your colon. It's amazing the, the plant that's in you, what's happening, the metabolism, the digestion, everything is happening in you because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amazing. Amazing what's going on. And God is saying, I did this to show you who I am. That you don't have to look very far. You don't even have to look out in the stars. You don't have to look anywhere else. All you have to do is look in the mirror. And you can see what an incredible creation that I made. Because I want to use you. You know what I love about all that? Not only do you have air going in to the lungs, but at the same time, you can have fluids Sweet tea with some lime on it. Come on, somebody. Anyway, y'all, man, y'all going to leave me and go to lunch here in just a minute. Anyway, <laughs> sweet tea with some lime. It's going to go in. You know what's so cool? How do you do that? How do you breathe? And how do you have one going into to your lungs and one going to your stomach at the same time? It's a little thing, and it's, it's God's creation. But this is what I loved about it. It's called an epiglottis. You know what epiglottis is? Epiglottis is the little flap that when you get ready to swallow something, it covers your windpipe. Interesting. I know most of you knew that, but I just, looking at it again, I think, you know, that's pretty cool. I just got to say, God, you're amazing. So what did he do? Here, here's what I, I wanted to get. So I wanted just to bring, bring you this, because I wanted you to see that God took time in making you. He wanted to form you. And we see in Psalm 139, and that's what he did. He began to form us in our mother's womb, and he put all of our members together, even before we existed. He made you. He's going to put the color eyes that you're going to have. He's going to color hair that you're going to have. He puts in your DNA how tall you're going to be. You know, it's up to you how wide we're going to be. And it's, you know, all, all of that. But he, you know, he put all the DNA there, and it, he says, look, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Blows your mind when you just think about it. A lot of times we don't think about it. And I'm telling you, it's just a journey, you know, that I've had over the last several months just to study and to see what God had truly done. It's amazing. All right? So when we came, then he said, not only am I going to do that, not only give us wisdom, but see, when he gave us a body, our body is, is holding our soul and spirit. He said, the body is only temporal. Don't get so caught up in the body, but your soul and spirit. And here's, here's the thing. God said, I want you to be like me. God is spirit. So he placed within, within us a soul and a spirit. And when we look, we talked about this in the series, our freedom series, but our body, we become world conscious. With our soul, we become self-conscious. And with our spirit, we become God conscious. With our soul, we're intellect, we're emotion and will. We think about it, we're stirred emotionally, then we act upon it. But with our spirit, what we are is we, uh, we have our, our conscience. And we have uh, our communion with God. This is how we worship. A while ago, you were sitting here. Some of you were raising your hand. That is your spirit. Jesus said, I want you to worship me in spirit and in truth. Right? And so it's with your spirit. Then we're combined with the spirit of God when it comes in. So what God did was he gave, he had all these, he made this man. He made Adam, and then he had all these animals. He said, listen, this is what I want you to do. Bring along, you know, all these animals. I'm going to let you name them. I created them, but you can name them. Pretty good deal, right? I think he ran out of names, so he started names like hippopotamus, you know, 
duck bill platypus. You know, I mean, there's just weird, weird names. You know, but he gave names to all the animals. And it's amazing what happened. But he came to the point where he said, it's not good that man should be alone. And so he gave him a helpmate. He gave him someone that was special. Someone, now what he had to do is he had to do a little more creation. He took the rib and he said, okay, she's going to look, you're going to have the brain, you have the skeletal system, but there's going to be some things that are a little bit different. It's called a reproductive system, all right? And so in order for us, you know, to be here, there had to be a male and a female. Does that make sense? All right? Let me remind you, okay? In the Bible, it says that God made man and woman. God made Adam and Eve. Are there any questions about that? I mean, seriously. We're coming in a day that, that people want to remove what the Bible says. And they say, yeah, but you don't understand, you know. I mean, we got men that are loving men, and we got women that are loving women, and we got, you know, these situations. We have to go back, not criticizing anybody, loving everybody. All right? Let's make that clear. But we have to understand that we have to go stand on what the Word of God says. All right, God made man, and then he made a woman, and he brought them together and said, now this is bone, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, right? She, be, she be, shall be called woman because she was taken out of man, right? Now we're in a situation they found in Canada that they did not even give a gender to this baby. It's the first genderless baby that we've known on record. Because they didn't want to give a name to it because they decided, well, when it grows up, it, when it grows up, it can decide on its own whether or not it's going to be a male or female. What does the Bible say? Seems pretty simple to me. Take a little peek. <laughs> you know, that's a boy. All right. That's all I'm going to say. You know, no question about it. Does that, does that make sense? And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you because we, we got in a day where if we're fearfully and wonderfully made, then why not be what God made us? And God is saying, I don't want their confusion. You know, you are special. I made you that way for a reason. All right? So this is where, you know, I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm just be honest with this. We have, I, I believe with all my heart, and this is what it is. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. There is a demonic force that is coming. It's trying to emasculate the men of this generation. These young men to say, no, you're really not a man. You're a woman. All right? It's doing that. Or to, to females, well, you're really not a girl, but you're a man. And I say that not judging. judging. Listen to me carefully. Because I have friends who have, who have children right now who are struggling with those very things. They, they are on Facebook. They're adamant about it. One little girl who we love dearly, we've seen her grow up, you know, and love her. Love, love, love her. And now she's decided, that's not how God made me. And so now she's going through all the processes. Now there's what used to be this beautiful, blonde-headed little girl, you know, who we loved and everything else. Now she has removed her breasts, and now she's called herself another name, a male name, and she's got whiskers. And, you know, I'm looking at why. What's going on? That is a spirit, ladies and gentlemen. It's a spirit that's a lying spirit trying to deceive them because when God made them in, their, in the mother's womb, God didn't make a mistake. He did not make a mistake, all right? And we're not to judge them. We're not to criticize. We are to love them into the truth. Does that make sense? I want you all to understand. You know, it's not this preacher up here bashing, you know, he's homophobic and all that. It's not that. It's loving these people to the truth so that they can be set free and be who God wants them to be. Does that make sense? All right. I'm trying to help you. Trying to help you. Now, here's what I want us to talk a little bit before we leave today. And that is I want to talk about this thing called marriage. Because this is a big deal, you know. I mean, it's, it's happening. One of the things you see in the political system and everything else is, you know, you got this same-sex marriage and all these systems like that. They're pushing it. I'm telling you, and this is where I stand, I stand on the Word of God. It's male, it's female, all right? So God said, he saw man, he said, man, it's not good that you should be by yourself. You need a, you need a helpmate. You need a woman, all right? And so, and the men said, Amen. Amen. This is a great time, husbands, to get some brownie points, all right? You say, I got my woman. Yeah. All right. It's good. I got you. 
Anyway, so we're coming here. We're coming here. Look at, look at Genesis 2, 18. Then the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. So the Lord caused a great sleep to fall upon the man. He took a rib, one of his ribs. He closed up the flesh at that place. God fashioned it into a the, a woman, the rib which he had taken from the man, he brought her to the man. There's not any mistake in that. He didn't take from the rib and make another man. All right? He made a woman. So let's talk about that for a moment. I want to talk about, just for a second, about this thing called marriage. Because in today's society, what we've done is we have diluted the covenant of the marriage. And what we said is, we can just kind of hang out, you know, because we love each other. You know, everything's, you know, kind of good if we want to, if we can just live together for a while and and, and whatever. Let me me say this very very clearly. A marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman. And we're to honor the covenant, right? And so when, when we say, and the reason why, because it is a picture, listen to me, it's a picture of salvation, A man and a woman is a picture of salvation. When we see Jesus and in the the scriptures, we as a church, we are seen as the bride of Christ. He is the bridegroom. There is a day coming where we will have a marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to party. Jesus is going to celebrate his bride. That is us. Does that make sense? All right. This is why it's important that we understand. I'm going to be very clear Because when we come to the point of salvation, we need to understand really what, how deep the meaning is. So listen carefully. When a man and a woman get married, they're going to have their wedding and they're going to celebrate and they're going to eat cake and whatever, and then they're headed off to whatever hotel or room they can get to as fast as the man can drive. All right, so he's, he's going to get there. What, is, what are they doing? In the Jewish custom, they would, what they called, consummate. They would not really be married until they consummated the wedding. All right, what that means is they were joined physically. There is a man. He's got what he's got. A woman's got what he got. They become one flesh. This is what he says. A man will leave his mother. A woman will leave her home, and the two shall become one flesh, they should become in union together. And what happens in that union is the man is able to plant life into her. When we come to salvation, we come understanding that we are in need of a Savior. We are in need of someone to come in to redeem us, to who, a, a lover who can love us like no other. And when we open our hearts to God... Listen to me carefully. When we open our hearts to God, Jesus then penetrates our life. He penetrates our life and he places within us life. It's called the Holy Spirit. Brings us eternal life. And it's a picture of the marriage. And so here's here's what's happening in churches and in marriages today and in our culture. Our society is, they're saying, I want to be counterfeit I want to have a counterfeit marriage. I want to look like marriage. I want to have kids like we have marriage. You know, I want to have sex like, we have, like we're married, whatever. But I don't want to commit to anybody. I don't want to commit to the Word of God, and I really want to, don't want to commit to you. I don't want to sign them papers. I don't want to go through that. So what do you have? you got counterfeit marriages. All right, they're acting like it, but they're not really married. They hadn't signed on the dotted line. They didn't say the I do's. Here's what's happening also in churches. We have counterfeit Christians. We have counterfeit Christians who are saying, I want the blessing of God. Just like the man wants the blessing of marriage. Hey, I don't want to marry you, but if you don't mind, a little sugar tonight would be really nice. You know, I want the blessing of it, but you're not getting it. You know, it's the old, you know, the old saying, why buy the cow when the milk's free? You know what I'm saying? Here's, here's the deal. We treat God the same way. We treat God and say, I want the blessing. Oh, God, bless me indeed. I want you to bless my finances. I want you to bless my family. Bless me with health. Bless me with all. Just bless me, bless me, bless me. But don't ask me to commit to you. Don't ask me to give to you. Don't ask me to serve you. Don't ask me to worship you. Don't worry. I don't want to be committed. I don't want a covenant with you. I just want the blessing of you. You see what I'm saying? And when God made man and woman, he said, I am making you as one. A man will leave his mother, one will leave her home. The two shall become one flesh. And when God 
wooed us, drew us to himself, pursued us. He said basically the same thing, I want you. I don't want to just date you. I committed my life to you. I committed my life to you. And it goes on. Let's look at Ephesians 5 just for a moment. And this is what it says. Husbands, love your wives just as who? Say it. Just as who? Love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And what did he do? He gave himself. You know what men want to do? Men want to get. Don't ask me to give. I want to get me some. He said, Christ loved the church, and he gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her. Let me say this, and I'm saying this with love. If you're in a situation where you find yourself, you may be living together or you're dating, just having sex or whatever, if you want to just let me know, I want you to know it's not a love situation, it's a lust situation. All right? And what you're doing is every time you're having sex with that person, you are not sanctifying her, you are blemishing her. You are causing her to come into sin. That's not love. That is not love. Hey, come on, please me. I got my needs, and I want you to please me. But Oh, you know, sorry about the guilt and the condemnation you're going to feel later. You know, I just got to get a little something, something, not if you don't mind. You know. What is that? That's self-centeredness. That's selfish. And God is saying, I want you to do something. Husbands, I want you to love your wife, commit to her, put the ring on the finger, sign on the dotted line, I do, for better, for worse, richer, poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. That kind of marriage, he says, when you do that, you give yourself, give, he give himself up for her. Why? So that you can sanctify her, have her cleansed by the washing of the water of the word. What does that mean? We're not only are to commit ourselves, we are to be spiritual leaders in the home. That is what a husband to be. You know, hey, baby, why don't you get them kids up and take them on down to church? I'm going to be... Uh, hanging out around the house, you know, eat me some breakfast and something. That's not a spiritual leader, men. But let me tell you, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to encourage every man in here, sign up for the retreat. We're going to be mighty because it's called the mighty, and we're going to be mighty, amen? So the husbands out of love, love their own wives as their what? Their own what? What? Come on. We're to love our wives as we love our own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. You know what happens when you're just living with a girl? You're not only not loving her, you're not even loving yourself. Because you're allowing the needs of this flesh to overrule the needs of the spirit. And see, what God is saying, you need to go deeper in relationship. Go deeper with me. Go deeper with her. Because that's where your joy is going to be. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Does that make sense? All right, listen. So we have to ask ourselves, what kind of husband am I? I'm talking to all the married men in here. All right, I'm looking in the mirror right now. What kind of husband am I? Don't say anything out loud, okay? I just going to talk about that. <laughs> But we have to ask. And one of the things I do on a regular basis, and sometimes I don't want to, but I'll say it anyway. I'll just say, how am I doing? How am I doing? Sometimes she gives me a thumbs up. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hang in the balance. <laughs> All right. And, I, and I, I will be honest with you. I will be honest with you. A couple of years ago, we, I, I had a trip to Israel. I came back a week and a half later and already had planned a trip to India because we had our MBI in India. I went from India over to Cambodia. And, uh, you know, we started MBIs over there in Cambodia. It was good stuff. It was missions. It was all kinds of stuff. But I got back, you know, man, it's good to see you and everything. So I just said, how you doing? You suck. I'm like, but I've been going for the hour. But, you know, when is my time? Hello. You all with me? I made up for it. I just want you to know. I did make it up. I'm still making up. All right, okay. Anyway, <laughs> this is why we have to see. And this is the reason why, and I'm, I'm going to close with this. The reason why we want to do it right is because this is the only time we get it. You ready for that? It's the only time we get it. Now, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm being sensitive to those because there's some of you, you wish you were married for some reason or, or the other. You know, you went through a divorce, 
heartbreaking, tragic. I understand that my heart feels for you because I can relate. But here's a situation where when Jesus was asked about marriage, he said, it's only happening here because I'm going to take you to another level. And here's, here's where we sit. In Luke 20, 34 through 36, it said, Jesus replied, the people of this age marry and are given in marriage with those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come. Jesus makes us worthy. And in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage. And they can no longer die, for they are like angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. You know what God is saying to us? He said, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And when I bring that person in there, husbands, make it the best. All right, I'm gonna, I put my spirit in, inside of you. I will help you. All right, wives, I put my spirit inside of you. I will help you. Okay, as this isn't lopsided here, it's together we work. Together we love. All right, this, this is what we see. But God is saying, he said, I want you to go deeper than this. Because even in the times that you're loving, it can be holy. The marriage bed is holy. Our lives should be holy. And God is saying, the reason why I want you to see that is because there's coming a day when you won't even be needing those things. Because when we get to heaven, there's be such joy, unbelievable, that we don't even need these things on earth. You with me? Some of you are sad, man, but I thought I'm going to be married forever. We'll be together forever but we won't need those reproductive things going. Now, the question is this, as we close. Do you have a real relationship? How is your marriage? How are things going? You need to ask yourself, where am I? I ask a lot of times in marriage counseling, you know, on a level of one to 10, where are you? Seems like the husband always thinks he's higher than the wife. <laughs> Dude, we're a four. <laughs> trouble, somebody's not seeing things, yeah, problems, but you know what, we work on it, we work on it, we're family, okay, we're going to work on it, and that's what we do, we put God in the middle of it, we say, God, help us, and I'm going to say, you're fearfully, wonderfully made, your marriage can be fearfully, wonderfully made as well, your home can be fearfully and wonderfully made, the enemy is always going to fight you, he's going to fight your marriage, he's going to try to throw anything he can in your way. He will, but he wants you to know he's here to help you. And so I want to say to those who are in marriages, you're married, man, love your wife as Christ loved the church. All right, pray together. Come to a point where you can say, hey, you know, you may think it's a seven, we're a two. All right, let's, let's bring it up. Come let us reason together. Does that make sense? So I really want to encourage husbands, see how you're doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you, ask your wife how you're doing. You may not like, like the answer. Wives, show some grace. All right. But let's get it right. Let's be strong. Because you know what? Right now, this is when we have it. We have it right here. We got it. Let's enjoy it. Let's make it the best we possibly can. Let's don't get content. All right? Let's make it the best we possibly can. And let's put God in the middle of it. And I'll say this. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Here's the word I want to leave you with. Submission means same mission. Be on the same mission together in serving God. All right? Now let me ask this. Are you a genuine Christian or are you counterfeit? Are you here wanting the blessing of God, but you're not really wanting to be obedient to God? Not really wanting to serve God? You know, bless me. Give me some more money. Give me some good health. You know, but don't ask me to serve you. Don't ask me to tithe. Don't ask me to do any of that. I just want what's for me. That's a tough question. And some of you have to ask, am I really, am I a genuine Christian? Am I the bride of Christ in love with my husband? Or is it just some religion that I'm just kind of hanging out? So I pray right now the Holy Spirit will reveal that to you. All right? I love you guys. Let's pray. So with head Thank you so much for being a part of our 
online streaming. I hope you really enjoyed the message today. And I want you to just take it to heart. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you, just take it to heart. And, and I pray that if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that today would be that day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. So that's what we're praying for you. And if you're wondering, how do I get to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Well, let me tell you, it's pretty simple. First of all, Jesus loves you more than anybody on this planet. So let me tell you, He's wanting you to know Him. So as you come to Him, we recognize, one, that we've sinned against God. Everybody has. The Bible says that all have sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God. Well, we recognize that one. We don't have to be told that. We know that. The second thing is, it says that God demonstrated His love for us, and that's you. God loves you even though that we were sinners. That's how much He cares for you. So you got to get it out of the way. He's not judging you. He already sent His Son to die in our place so that we could have all of our sin placed upon Him. And then we believe we had faith in Him that that's what He did. And He did it because He loved us. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death. Well, Jesus took our death sentence for us. But then it doesn't leave it as a negative. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. It's not works. It's not a a church membership somewhere. It's not giving money to somebody. All of those are good things, but this not, does not bring salvation. So now, how do you get there? It's only in Jesus. So simply just open your heart and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me. I want to turn away from all the stupid stuff that I'm doing. And I want to turn to you. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, the boss of my life. And Jesus, come in and save me. I want to love you. I want to live for you. I want to obey your word all the days of my life. And that's what you can do. Pray that prayer right now. And I'll tell you, Jesus is waiting. And the moment, the instant you do that, you will be saved. And my encouragement to you, find a great Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Get connected. Now, if you're in the Houston area, man, we would love to have you at Fellowship of the Nations. But if you're in different parts of the country or even around the world, find somewhere that they're preaching Jesus. And I promise you, it will change your life. Hope you can join us again next week. And uh, up until then, we'll be praying for you. Pray for us. We'd love to hear from you. Just go on our website, FOTN.org, Fellowship of the Nations, and let us hear from you. God bless you.